And we back. Today, I want to rebuild the Detroit Pistons. I'm just fascinated at what their offseason could look like. They got Kay Cunningham, who's the first overall pick, and he's an absolute stud. Sadiq Bey dropped 50 early in the season. They got a lot of young players and a top five draft pick. So I just want to get them back to the promised land because it's been 18 years since Chauncey Billups, Ben Wallace, Rip Hamilton, and Tayshaun Prince, and Rasheed Wallace did their thing, which is weird to say because I remember watching that series as a kid, and that was 18 years ago. Regardless, I am getting the Detroit Pistons back Good, fun, and making them a champion. Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. They've been a sponsor of this channel for some time because it is a service that I'm using pretty much every single day. NordVPN gives you next level protection when you're browsing on unfamiliar networks. But for some reason, if protection is not number one in your priority list, it opens up a whole new world when it comes to streaming. Sometimes I'm kind of bored with Netflix when it comes to the USA selection, so I put mine over in the UK and boom, there's so many more options. But that's not it because Nord is starting a new threat protection feature. All you have to do is toggle it on in your desktop app and now your security is even deeper. Deeper. We're talking about protecting you from malicious websites, malware, trackers, and intrusive ads. And as long as you turn it on, it stays on even if your VPN is off. There are a ton of websites that try to gather information about you, but with NordVPN threat protection, that all stops. All you have to do is hit that link in the description or go to NordVPN.com because they're giving you a huge deal. We're talking a two-year deal plus an additional month at a big discount. And did I mention that it was risk-free, a 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like the service? So shout out to NordVPN again for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the action. Now, here's what our Detroit Pistons team looks like. They even brought in Marvin Bagley on a trade that they basically gave up nothing and he looked really good on the second half of the season. So I'm curious to see what Marvin Bagley can turn into if we keep him around long term. I don't really know. But right now, I think one of the things that's missing, Detroit Pistons fans don't get mad to me when I say these things. Remember, I'm just I'm just a guy that plays Xbox and PlayStation sometimes. You feel me? One thing that I think is holding this team back from being one of the super fun, cool teams to watch is the logo on the jersey. It's not terrible for sure. It ain't, I don't think it's the worst, but this is what they look like now, and this is what it looks like after the rebrand. I was just looking on the 2K share looking for something great. There's not a lot of great Detroit Pistons rebrands out there. I didn't want to go back in the past. A lot of the rebrands had like the big horse, which is one of my favorite jerseys and logos of all time. But I didn't want to go back in the past. We went a little bit into the future, and this is a futuristic logo. Are we ready? Pistons fans, are we ready to get this tattooed on your body <laughs> and to buy jerseys and shirts with the, this is the that's that's the logo. It's behind Kate's head. There it is. You see it? Okay, cool. It's a little bit more modernized, and maybe it's a lot different than some of the other ones across the league, or maybe not because it's circular. But the previous logo was also circular. So regardless, you know what I'm saying? We got people that are ready for the rebrand. They ready but for the future. They just hired general manager Kenny Beecham. Can I get a better face than that? All right, he got braids. General manager Kenny Beecham has zero experience whatsoever, but he said he got a plan for the Detroit Pistons to get back to good and back to relatable and in the limelight. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant helped the seventh seeded Brooklyn Nets get all the way to the finals to go against the eight seeded Pelicans. And they were going against the seven seeded Minnesota Timberwolves. This simulation was crazy. Okay, you gotta make sure that we got the right draft class in. And we do. Uh, we have a projected top five pick this year. I'm excited and hoping that we get number one, two, or three considering it's like a one, two, or three draft at the very, very top. I guess I don't really have a preference out of the top guys who is simulated past the lottery. I didn't, you see, I didn't do that. We got the fifth pick. Whoa, that's terrible. That's definitely not ideal. Not ideal whatsoever. Now I got to figure out how the heck do we find our way to getting a top three-ish pick. Jeremy Grant has been really, really good for this team. But if my plan go the way I want it to go, he's low-key kind of expendable. So, and this is my thinking. I'm going to talk to the Trailblazers, who are a team that's still trying to build around Dame, and say, hey, can you give us your sixth overall pick, and we give you Jeremy Grant and, I guess, Kelly Olenek, two players that can play for you right now, and uh, we use the fifth pick and the sixth pick to call up the Rockets or, or the Pacers or the magic to try to say, what does the mock draft say? Because you know what? We might get to the point they got us getting, okay, so it's the top three draft. Yep, the top three are the top three, and that is the way it is. I wouldn't mind any of these guys, honestly. I would. I guess I would rather have out of the three. Maybe it's Chet. Mm, I don't really know who it is, but the top three dudes are the top three dudes for a reason. Okay, so the sixth overall pick doesn't have a ton of value, low key. They want Sadiq Bay who at this point in the video is untouchable, but I will give you Jeremy Grant. They say no to that. What if I gave you Jeremy Grant and like I said, Kelly Olenek. And then I also give you this swap. And our current second, we got a deal. Two second round picks, Jeremy Grant 
and Kelly Olenek to move up to six or get the sixth overall pick. That's a dub if you ask me. Now we go talk to like the Rockets, I guess. I don't know. How do we convince the Rockets that they don't need a top three pick? Instead, they need five and six. Which one of these three teams do I feel like would much rather have two lottery picks instead of one? or two top seven picks instead of one. Is it the Pacers? You know, they're basically in year one of their rebuild. Do they want to accelerate it kind of, even though they might be giving up on a generational player at the first overall pick? Let's see what they'll do. Wow, I didn't even realize that that first overall pick was gonna be looking like that. Yeah, no, forget all of that. What if I also give you Killian Hayes? Killian Hayes has had a rough two seasons of his NBA career, but there's still potential there. He's only 20. I'll give you all three. Whoa, okay. All right, Detroit Pistons fans. Moves were made. Moves were made. But we also opened up salary for the offseason. Yes, sir. Ski. Go to the draft. Thank you. Okay. Now I got to figure out of the top three, since I have number one, who is the guy of the top three? So we got Paolo, we got Chet, and we got Jabari Smith. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. I didn't even think this far. Now that we got this pick, I got to make that decision. I'm going to draft Ben Chero. Um, I don't know if he's going to be a center or power four for us. I know he played more four than five in his college career. The only thing that scares me a little bit is that he's not as great on the defensive side of the ball as I want, but we're going we're gonna to draft him first overall, even though he's projected to go two. Am, am I stupid? No, he's projected to go one on, the, okay, he's projected to go one on everything. So let's just pick him up. Paolo Benchero, welcome to the team, my boy. Welcome to Detroit. H hopefully that's the right pick. Jabari went two and Chet went three. And then the Pacers went with EJ and AJ. All right, are those good picks? I literally have no idea. I basically only know the top three draft picks in this draft. So uh, <laughs> if you're anything outside of that, I can't really help you. So we got a lot of money. We freed up the money that was Jeremy Grant. And then we just didn't have a lot of money on the books anyway. So there's a couple players that I want to go after. One of them is Jalen Brunson. His, his contract would be extremely small here. I also see Bradley Beal with no offers. But I think it's more realistic that Jalen Brunson is the guy. Number two on the list would be Miles Bridges. And I'm trying to give him a bag just so they don't match the offer. We got the money to spend. Why not spend it? 24 years old, 85 overall at this point. I'm throwing him that bag and that would be his best offer by about 20 mil. Put the pressure on the Hornets to make a decision. And if it's not him, then we got other options here in free agency. Both of them have agreed. We still have Bagley's cap hold who will probably keep on a qualifying offer for about six, seven million, I think it is. We just need them to not match it. I don't think they did. I think that's it. I think that was the last day or today is the last day. Today's the last day. It's Miles Bridges' day. Boom! Miles Bridges, welcome back to the M. Yeah. And technically, he's the best player on the team. Okay. So, our star lineup for next season is going to see a combination of like Jalen Brunson, K. Cunningham, Sadiq Bey, uh, Miles Bridges, and then Paolo Benchero. Then, off the bench, we still have Czech Diallo, who's really good for us, almost 80 overall. I'm guessing Isaiah Stewart's going to jump up to maybe the 80 overall club. So, we need to fill out the rest of this bench. I think we can be a playoff team this season, hoping that Kay Cunningham blossoms. We're not a championship team just yet. We didn't go into the season thinking this was about to be a championship season. Oh, snap. Anthony wants only 11. That's kind of a steal. But it feels somewhat unrealistic. Now we got to figure out if Marvin Bagley is worth this match if he's going to be coming off our bench for the next season. Three years, $48 million from the Spurs. The Spurs are trying to sell up on Bagley. And I think I match it just because I believe there's still some left in the tank for Bag. Even if he is a glorified sixth man, seventh man, I think this contract is not too terrible considering our circumstances. And it won't be a contract that we cannot move. We're also bringing in Gary Payton a second on the minimum. And I'm like, if we can get one of the best defensive players to come off our bench, why not? All right, so we're going to play a progression. This is a big moment for us. Uh, K jumps up five. He's at 27 badges now. Miles jumped up two. That's great. I was a little bit afraid that he'd be done progressing. But now that I see he's not, that's great. Sadiq jumps up two. Isaiah Stewart jumps up three as a backup big. He's about to be a stud. And then we also see JB, Jay Brunson, also jumps up two. Anybody falling? Ricky Rubio is a guy I brought in as a backup point guard because I just saw what he did for the Cavs last season. I'm like, hey, do you like the Midwest enough to stay around? He does, you know? I, why? Whoa. Isaiah Livers classifies as a sinner. Wait, I wait, let me save this. Is that 2K or the person that created this save file? Because I'm not, I didn't create the save file. No, he's a four. 
Okay. Why was he a center in the save file that I'm using? I have no idea. That's absolutely not right. So we're, we're going to make him a four. And look at that. He's better as a stretch four than he is as a stretch five. Who would have thought that the six, six guy shouldn't be playing center? All right, fellas. I think that was a perfect scenario when it comes to free agency and offseason for the Detroit Pistons. We got our guys. Our star lineup is going to be nice. They want to start Ricky Rubio because technically Jalen Brunson is not a one. Kay Cunningham, I'm going to make a point guard, shooting guard. I just want him with the ball in his hands anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We're going to see what this team looks like. First game, new rebrand, new team, basically. A full new team, kind of. Not really. JB at the two. You know what? Just to make it a little bit smoother. I'm going to make K Cunningham the two full-time, and Jalen Brunson is the one. He actually goes up. So we're going to do it like that just because defensive assignments, 2K is dumb enough where they still have the point guard being guarded by the smaller player. So let's just do it like that. Jalen Brunson is technically the point guard. They want to have Paolo come off the bench to start the season. I'm not against that. You know, you got to earn your minutes. Isaiah Story had a good year for us last season, you know? And we can run a 10-man so we can get Ricky Rubio to get a little bit more minutes. But I do want minutes going heavily to Cade. Cade should get about 35. And I think Paolo, even though he's coming off the bench to get about 30. And Bridges, since we brought you in in that huge contract, so at the least, at the least get 34 as well. Okay, first game. Going against Luka. This is a good test. And we win. Yeah. And it was Bridges in this first game having a big one. Cade struggled from the field, but got to the free throw line and ended up with a 15-7-7 game. Game two. I just saw an injury. Who got injured? It was Ricky Rubio? Who, got, who just got injured? Sadiq Bey. When I do these realistic slash videos where I'm using the real rosters. I do keep injuries on because I wanted to feel somewhat realistic. So Zadig Bay, it's a bruised rib. He can play next game. We're not worried about it. Starting off 3-0 and oh, and Miles so far. Have I been saying Mikhail a lot this video? Please tell me I haven't been saying Mikhail a lot this video. Ah, that would be tragic. Miles through three games average at 31. <laughs> Making four games. He's keeping it up. Don't offer, don't offer me no craziness. Sadiq Bay's back. Oh, do we simulate until we lose a game? I think we simulate until we lose a game because right now... Okay, there he is. Sadiq Bay just got injured. Um, He's going to be out for some time. Four to six to be exact. So with him being out four to six, it is time for Paolo Benchero to get into the starting lineup as the power forward. Miles Bridges is moving up to the three. Let's get his minutes back. Let's get K minutes back because I kind of messed with him a little bit. Hamidou Diallo, let's get those minutes down. Bagley is on fire right now, which is great. In this minutes, he's been playing really good. His per 36 numbers look amazing. So I'm going to get his minutes up just a little bit. KCP is going to get minutes because we're missing some wing play with Sadiq being out. And Paolo, man, it's your time to shine. Show us why you should maybe take that starting center spot eventually with a 5C, by the way. So it's pretty good. As long as we're a playoff team, I'm happy with the way this season is going. First game with Paolo in the starting lineup, we lose. But he put up 13, 7, 3, and 2. Bagley put up a double-double off the bench. So, you know, Miles Bridges is no longer averaging 31. If you you uh, probably could have guessed that, he's definitely come back down to earth averaging 20, which is still better than, you know, he was averaging last year, at least in this simulation. And we are just losing now. Hold on. Paolo just had his best game as a pro. But, like, can we get another win on the book? There we go. Thank you. Oh, Y'all got me a little bit worried. I don't... A playing team would be... A not a successful season in my personal opinion based on everything we did how much we spent a playing team would definitely not be it so be top six so we turned up at least a little bit uh since we last talked we are the four seed kind of teetering around a two seat though only a half a game back from that the 76ers are running away with the conference and it's it's pretty good it's been going pretty solid marvin bagley is currently injured not a big deal though well maybe kind of because maybe i want to throw him in a trade but we got another year for that i'm trying to figure out since we're at the deadline what can we potentially do i mean we got so many players on one-year deals but what you're going to notice is that a lot of these players are selling their rookie contract so technically Cade is on a one-year deal rookie contract Sadiq's on a one-year deal but he's still on his rookie contract so i'm um, saying thing with like Sadiq. i don't think Hami's still on his rookie deal because he's also switched teams a few times so yeah he's going to be unrestricted which scares me a little bit i don't know what this market's gonna be I don't know what it is, but we're going to have to make some changes eventually, right? We can't keep this entire core intact, even though we really do like Hamidi Allo. He wants about $9 million, expected about $9 million. And so far this season, he's averaging like nine points per game on about 50% shooting and 30% from three. So he's been having a pretty solid season. I don't know if I'm making trades right now, but I'm curious to just see what's going on around the league. Try to figure out if there's teams that are maybe selling that we can snag a player or two. I actually feel like this is a year that we just let it roll. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We might lose Hamid Diallo to free agency, which makes me just want to... It just makes me want to trade him then. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to see. I'm going to see what's up. This is the type of trade I'm thinking about. You give me an unprotected first round pick from 2027, but it's still a first round pick. And you give us back an expiring contract. Royce O'Neal will not come here and play. Oh, he's got a team option. We could decline that. Cool. Hami, we'd have loved to bring you back, but we just have to think bigger picture. And uh, that's like, what, 20 minutes a game? He's only in 13 minutes per game. So it wasn't like he was out there being hella impactful. So far, Paolo in his rookie season, what are you averaging? Are you averaging rookie of year numbers? No, but per 36 you are. Next year's the year you probably start. I'm going to be honest with you. Isaiah Stewart, 
He's a good rebounder. He can score a little bit. But uh, he'll probably be better suited as a guy coming off our bench. And they want to throw Paolo to the start lineup. I can't agree to that just yet. We're, we're rolling as a team. It will feel weird to make significant changes to our star lineup in the middle of the season where we're playing very good. Now, if Isaiah Stewart had got injured, then we went on the run, then sure. You know, he might have lost his spot. But right now, we're cool. We just can't lose a bunch of games in the second half of the season. Or my little trade to get rid of Hamidou Diallo looks terrible. Um, but <laughs> All right, one or two going into that, uh, that uh, all-star break. I stopped this right here. Shout out to the homies for going on a big old streak at the end of the season. But something just happened. And it's big. Paolo Benchero in the second to last game of the season twisted his ankle and he is out six to eight. Now, right now, we have at least clinched a play-in spot, but we haven't even completely clinched the playoff spot. And something that you missed is that Miles Bridges missed a significant part of the season. So we're in game 81. So he missed about 10 games of the season. We limped our way to the finish line and it's still not over. We got to beat the Cavs and we lose to them, but we did secure five seed. So that's, that's still good. Even though we won't have, oh, Tata Washington, 10th overall pick. Gets Rookie of the Year. Jordan Poole, Sixth Man of the Year. K. Cunningham, not an NBA player. We don't have any All-NBA players, but that's okay. We didn't expect to. We're the 5 seed, which is a significant improvement. Not having Paolo Benchero does decrease our odds of winning the championship. Even though I don't think this is a championship team, you know what I'm saying? All right, let's see what we can do. We're going against the Boston Celtics in the first round. See if they made any changes in the current Boston Celtics team. Jalen Brown must be injured. There's no way they traded Jalen Brown, right? He got, he's got to be injured. He is. We can win this series. He's only out for one to two weeks, so he could low-key come back for like game three or four. We're up 2-1. It's 2-2. Two, two. I would assume he's back in the lineup now. He's not. Yo, we got to capitalize. I know we missing some players too, but we got to capitalize. And we lose this a, a crucial game. And is he back now? No. Come on. We can win this, bro. We can win this series. We're at home. New arena. Not a new arena. Maybe a new arena. Or maybe new rebranding on the floor. I don't really know. We're outmatched. First round exit. Like I said, not a season where I thought we was going to win a championship or even compete past what we did. This is a successful season. We're going to go into year three of K Cunningham and year two Pelicans win a championship. A year two of this court being together. And maybe we make some moves around the edges to make things a little bit better. LeBron trying to retire. <laughs> not on my watch. Okay, so this is this is what I did this offseason. We got progression on a lot of people. Miles is kind of stagnant here in 86. I'm okay with that. 86 is a good number for him. We got 92 overall K Cunningham in year number three. That's great. 40 bats. He's a stud. We got Paolo Benchero jumping up to the start and center position of our team at 85 overall. Jalen Brunson jumped up too. We brought in Colin Sexton for a half of season to rebuild his value. And I'm trying to dump him to another team for some assets. Right? And I did same thing with Matisse, but I brought Matisse for two years. Just in case we don't want to trade Matisse because he's too good. Maybe there's a sp splat out splash, depending on what team is selling and rebuilding. That can help us accelerate this process. You know what I'm saying? We were already the 5C last season. We brought back everybody that was important and got a little bit better across the edges. And I think this could be a year that we can end up top three in our conference without the trade. But I also think there's a trade to be made. First game, Toronto Raptors. Yeah, K, okay. take over the league, bro. Also need Ben Chero to, at the bare minimum, he need to average 20. There's a 16 to 12 game. I ain't mad at 16 to 12, because next game you're giving us 30. He, he gave us 15 and 11. Oh, is this who you're going to be? This is who you're going to be? 85 overall. I'm, I'm assuming he's got a lot of defense in that 85 overall if he's not out there scoring. Or his tendencies might be low. Is this tendencies low? Don't tell me my first overall pick tendencies low. No, it's not. He's just not out there trying to look for a shot. Nine shot attempts. I mean, do what you think is best to help our team win. We would love to see you at, uh, put up more than just eight shots. You shot the same amount of shots as people that's off our bench. You and our backup center shot the same amount of shots. That's not acceptable, Paolo. All right, so we're at the deadline or close to the deadline. We are the fourth seed right now. And we're six games behind the Hawks. Now, I went around the league and looked at who we're selling or rebuilding. And I came up with this list of three pe or two people. So LeBron went to New York to play basketball. So that's interesting. And at least Anthony Davis by himself. He's got a player option for next season. So if we try to pull off a trade for Anthony Davis, it would be a risk. And if we do it, I'm looking at Miles Bridges at the three, Paolo at the four, and Anthony Davis at the five. That will be my starting lineup with Cade and Jalen Brunson. Or we go to Kawhi Leonard. And the last person that did a one-year rental of Kawhi Leonard won a damn championship. So maybe it's Kawhi that can move into Sadiq's spot. And Sadiq comes off the bench. But I don't think we're going to be able to pull off that trade without giving up Sadiq. So which one is more likely to happen? I don't really know. I guess Anthony Davis has full five-star value. So maybe it is. For why? Bagley would have to be a part of it 100%. I mean, he's only averaging nine points per game. He's low-key fell off since last season. And maybe we're just not giving him enough minutes because his per 36 looks about the same. Bag has to get thrown into this trade. And we still got to make up 20 
25 million more. Kyle Sex has been a one-year rental that has low-key been really good for us. I would rather have the one-year rental of Kawhi over Colin Sexton. So Kyle Sex is in this rate as well. We still got to make up 9 million. And how the heck do we do that now? I guess I didn't think that far through. And if I throw them like Matisse, we still have to throw them Alec Burks. And that's the whole, that's four for basically rotation players. Some people that aren't making a lot of money, but some of those people are, have value. Contractually, this all makes sense right now. We're gonna offer it, they say no. Then we get a, we got a pick from the Jazz that's not very valuable. They're not interested still. What if I also give you our pick for next season, top three protected, it's not gonna be valuable because we're gonna be good. They still say no. I, I do think this is not a great package to get Kawhi Leonard potentially. And it does like kind of pigeonhole ourselves to this season with not a lot of depth. All right, I guess we go talk to the Lakers about Anthony Davis now. All right, so we're talking to the Lakers about Anthony Davis and they're not interested in that. We still have this Jazz pick that I, I don't have any personal interest in. And then we have our first round pick from this year. And uh, as a third first round pick, do, I'll throw a third first round pick. The Lakers get their rebuild started and they still say no. Wow, the two people that I thought was a possibility to get that superstar player to come to the team to put us over the hump can't put together the trade. And I think it's mostly me not willing to give up Brunson. Oh, we had the opportunity to potentially sign Bradley Beal in the first offseason, but I decided not to. I decided to go with Jalen Brunson. And we might be trading Jalen Brunson to make this a possibility. Or maybe not. Maybe I can finesse. Uh-huh. Still got to make about a million. So I'll also give you Alec Burks. And then you could give us back uh somebody that's cheap guess oh boogie's valuable but they just want to pick they want one first round pick throw in colin sexton into this trade colin sexton's supposed to be in this trade and we didn't have to throw him in to get bradley beal all right you gotta tell me twice i thought i was gonna have to give up jay lebrunson now jay is just like a really good backup point guard now because kate is the dude whoa wow um, I still think there's moves to be made because now we have just have a plethora of just like guards that are really good. I can't in all likelihood or all good conscience have all of these really good guards, especially when our backup power forward now is Casey Akpala and our backup small forward is now Garrison Matthews. Oh, we got Boogie. I forgot he was a part of that trip. I'm like, whoa, Boogie's here. So we got to move Colin Sexton, maybe? This is what I think we can do. JB can go back to a shooting guard, which is what he was when we signed him, right? And that lets Saban Lee be our real backup point guard. How is he? He hasn't even really played this season, but last year, oh, he played a little bit, but last year he was pretty solid in the minutes he was given. I mean, he's a 77, which is decent enough to be a backup. Um, so we can move Colin for a wing or a power forward. You know, I think that's I think that's a good idea. And we can move Boogie to his next team because we don't need Boogie. Y'all know about New Orleans Noel in these videos. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to keep New Orleans around for right now. We'll see if we have to throw him into a potential trade. But the reason I want New Orleans is for insurance in case Paolo or uh, Isaiah Stewart get injured and, you know, he can actually play minutes. And I think I go through this again, actually. Go through rebuilding slash selling teams. Uh, that might be looking to get a 24-year-old Colin Sexton for a wing player. All right, so we added OG Ananobi, Kelly Oubre, Dylan Brooks, and Pat Connaughton. All of them, I think, are good options. But OG's contract is just a little bit more than what we really have to give up. We'd have to throw in, like, an extra meal. We got an extra meal and the boogie contract. I didn't even realize that we'd be giving them added value. So, you know what? Give us back a, a future first. All right, we're getting greedy. How about you just give us a future second and we can say it's a deal? Okay. All right, all right. How we feeling, boys? I think we did all right. And in the first game, after all these moves, we lose. That's okay. Gelling period. The second game, after all these trades. All right. Uh, third game, after all of these trades. Fourth game, after all of these trades. Yeah, there's our win. Wow, that wasn't fun. How about we win one more just to ease my pain? There we go. Okay. All right. And we beat Kyrie, Ben Simmons, and, and KD, who are one of the better teams in the league. Uh, they're beneath us, but still a good team. All right, we already passed the deadline. So what I, mean, I can't even say, oh, what else can we do? So this is our roster. Only thing I'm thinking about is like fit, scheme fit, because we have Dwayne Casey, who's going to be a guy that's all about his grit and grind slash defense, and we don't really have a lot of that. If we went to like a balanced pace and space makes a lot of sense with Cade, and then we have Miles Bridges. Do we fire Dwayne? Dwayne Casey is such a good coach. It would feel weird to fire him right now. Uh... <laughs> Hey, bro, I got to do what I got to do, Dwayne. This is our year. 
this is the perfect coach for what we're trying to do. I mean, I'm being honest with you. He's a cheat code of a coach, but he's the perfect coach, in my opinion. So we're running a nine man. So let me tell him it's a nine man. And we got the ideal coach for our situation. Let's go to our first game after that. Dwayne Casey got fired in the middle of the season on a, on a good team. Think about that. My apologies, Dwayne. I ain't want to do you like that, but we had to do what we had to do, all right? This is our championship season. And I'm not saying you were holding us back because we'll never really know, but I think we just put ourselves in the best position to do it now. Tatum wins MVP. Ben Simmons is now a six man, Giannis. And we get most improved player Paolo Benchero, which is cool. I didn't even know he was playing that much better. And he I guess he's really not. He just got more minutes this season and now his stats went up. Nobody on our NBA team. We ended up still being the five seed, which is not ideal, but I still believe that, you know, we are a really good team and we could compete with anybody. I'm showing him our rotation for this playoff run. I think Sadiq Bey is the next to go low key. I hate to say it if we don't win it this year, but hopefully we do win it this year. We could just have all the glory with Sadiq Bey being on the team. Are we ready? Okay, we are ready. First game against the Milwaukee Bucks, who of course have Giannis and company. They got RJ Hampton and Kevon Looney as the other two in their, their star lineup. You know the first three. Okay, we took home court advantage. We can, we, can, we can sweep Giannis and company. I ain't mad at that. All right, this is the big matchup, though. If we win this series, I feel like we can win any series. Hopefully, we get our little revenge after what they did to us last season. Game one, we win. And Tatum just won MVP, too. So think, think about that. You knew he wasn't going to go out without swinging, so we're not worried about one game. But we will be worried about if he wins two back-to-back. -back. Hold on. Let's get that Let's get that home court advantage back. Okay. All right. Winnable, very, very winnable, winnable, winnable series. We are away. We need to take one more at the TD Garden. Please do. Yep. They will. I mean, it's still 10 minutes left. It's possible, but I feel good that we can come out there and steal at TD. And now we can clinch... A conference finals appearance on our home court in front of our fans with our new rebranding. First quarter did not go ideally, but we got fight in this team. And it's a three-point game with six minutes left in the third. And these boys hoop. These boys fight. Five-point game. That's game. That's wraps. We're in the conference finals. The first five seed to do it since I think the Miami Heat did it in the bubble. Now we're going against the two seed. All right. Dwayne Burke, auto-generated guy. And then you know the rest of the team. They are stacked. They are real life stacked. Wow. I didn't realize how good they were going to be in this uh, this simulation because Tyrese Maxey is about to hit 90 overall club. Game one. We actually take home court advantage. And it's Kay Cunningham being an absolute stud. His points per game numbers in this series ain't been great. But that game one in the conference final, elite. We knew it wasn't going to be no sweep. We even held Joel Embiid. We fouled out Joel Embiid and we didn't win. That is a game you need to win. Joel played 21 minutes and we didn't win the game. Tyrese Maxey killed us and we got clamped up. Game three, we need this one. We don't get it though. All right, get the hood up. Get the hood up, dog. Sadiq is selling, bro. Sadiq is real life selling. How was Jalen Brunson playing? Or do we just give it to OG? OG Ananobi has to take those minutes, bro. OG Ananobi has to take some of these minutes, bro. Sadiq Bey is selling. OG's a better defender at this point anyway. I need my stars to get 40 at this point. Man, Sadiq, I'm, I'm mad you had to do that to us. And we win the first game and we put him on the bench. I mean, hey, you got to do what you got to do, bro. Even Miles is not performing very well in the playoff run either. It's basically our guard play that's, that's holding us up. And good defense, I guess. These are low-scoring games, except for this one. We're one game away from being in the finals. OG didn't have a great shooting game, but he had two steals, so I'm passing that and say he had a great game. They force seven, though. They force seven. Sadiq Bey is done. He is done. You will not play another minute in this video. I don't care if it's next season. I don't care if it's the, we win the championship this year. You're not playing another minute, bro. I wish I was making that up, but I'm not. Game seven, away at Wells Fargo, right? It's Wells Fargo. And we're up convincingly. We're up by double digits with nine minutes to go. We're in the finals. We are in the finals. Tyrese Maxey gave it his all, but Harden put up a stinker in game seven. So did Toby, big stinker in game seven. I don't know who you are, but you took eight threes or six threes, and you ain't you ain't really provide. You're basically an average three-point shooter. Why'd you shoot so many? All right. And on our side, yep. Finally, we, we had a Miles Bridges game. We were waiting for you to wake up. K Cunningham, thank you. And we are going against who? The one seed of Pels. The one seed of Pels. We have CJ Herb Jones, Brandon Ingram, Zion, and Zubach. And look at these star players in sync with the they doing they doing everything together. They doing everything together. I'm with them. All three of us. Alright, let's win this championship. Game one. We win. 
Detroit bad. Oh my God. A 30-20 game from Zion, but it's not enough because Miles Bridges came out to play and Paolo had almost a 20-20 game with six blocks. But that has to be a crazy enough stat line if he would have got that one extra point. 20-20 and six blocks, NBA Finals record type thing. We lose game two. Right now, we got Miles Bridges guarding Z Zanito. Can we steal another game? We do. I'm trying to figure out if who's the best option to guard Zion. But I honestly think that there is no guard in Zion. Let's just prevent everybody else from doing their thing. Go up 3-1. Yes! We are one game away. Zion go get his. But nobody else did. And Bench Harrow at 21 years old wins finals MVP. Yes, let's get it. W's. I cannot believe that Sadiq Bay tried to sell our championship. But regardless, we got it. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And comment down below. Ooh. Zion is unguardable. That's all I need to know. You watched the entire thing because you saw him basically average 40 points in the finals.